Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. <laughs> Today we're studying Daf Chof Ches, Daf 28 of Masech the Beyo. Uh, friends, we start off with our first mission that talks about weighing meat on Yom Tif. Very interesting. How do you weigh out meat uh, on Yom Tif? If you want to know how much meat you're uh, working with. Alright, that's very interesting. And then we get to a Another Mishnah that talks about sharpening knives on Yom Tov, very interesting, gets into the Shiloh about our machshire ochel nefesh doch Yom Tov or not. Right? We've seen, for example, we've seen the discussion of machshire mitzvah, if the doch Shabbos, for example, like the opinion of Rabbi Diezer, that he says machshire mitzvah doch Shabbos. So, um, anyways, our machshire ochel nefesh doch Yom Tov. So that's machlokas between Rabbi Yudah and the Rabbanon. So, friends, we got a very nice daf over here. Daf Chofches, Masech the Beis. We're going to stop, start all the way at the top at the new Mishnah. Rabbi Yehudah Omer says, Rabbi Yehudah Shokel Adam Basar Kneged Akli O Kneged Akupitz Givaldik. Um, so if you have some meat and you want to know the weight of the meat, whether you want to, um, so, very interesting. So if you have a, a, um, a Shoichit, on Shabbos, uh, on Yom Tif. So a fellow slaughters meat for you and he wants to weigh it out to know how much meat it is. So he's allowed to weigh it, but says with Buddha, he can't weigh it with like a regular weight because that would be like a regular weekday kind of thing. Um, but what he can do is he can use some kind of a vessel that he knows how much it weighs or a cleaver. You can kind of use these al- alternate things that aren't, you know, regular weekday weights. But sort of alternative kind of means of weighing how much the meat is. Whereas the chacham say, stay away from the from from the scales. You don't want to be weighing meat on Yom Tif whatsoever. Michael Iker, what does it mean that the says the Gemara? What does it mean that the rabbis say that you don't want to be using a weight, uh, a scale whatsoever? So I'm review the Amr Shmuel. I feel the Shomer Menach Barim. Even if you have you know, even if you want to keep the meat away from mice, so that the mice don't get the meat, so you want to put it on a scale to just kind of leave it out of the way, even that, right? That's what they're saying. The Chachomer is saying, You can't use a scale whatsoever, not even to save the meat from the mice. Amravidi Baravan says, that it's only not allowed if it's hanging on like a peg. Of sorts, if it's hanging on like a peg, kind of the normal way that a scale would be fixed, like hanging on something, so then you're not allowed to leave anything on it. You can't put the meat on it. Says if you in the name of Shmuel that if you have a professional butcher and um, he is able to weigh meat by basically holding a weight in one hand and meat in the other hand, and he's just able to feel it out essentially and understand the weight of the meat based on the weight of the weight um, that's in the other hand. So you're not allowed to do that on Yom Tif because it's basically how he does it during the week. It's a regular kind of normal way for him to weigh meat, so therefore he cannot do it on like that on Yom Tif. I'm reviewed on Shmuel. You can't um, weigh meat in water. I guess they had some way of knowing that if you put water uh, meat in water, so depending on you know the displacement of the water, you can I guess calculate the weight of the meat. Omer Vchibar Ashi says Vchibar Ashi Oser Lasos Beisiad BeBoser. You not let it make a a, a beisiad a way to hold the meat. So meaning. Apparently, the, uh, you know, after they would slaughter meat, so how do you transport it home? So I guess at least one way of transporting it home is they would put a hole in the meat and you can pick it up by the hole in the meat. So, and that's what's called a base yad, a handle. So, says of you to Amr Shmuel, no, says of Chibar Ashi, you're not allowed to make a handle in the meat. Amr Ravina says, Ravina Uviyada Shari, but, if you're using your hand, then it's allowed. Meaning, don't take a knife and cut a hole for somebody to carry the meat with. But, it, you know, you can use your hand to kind of poke a hole in the meat so that you could um, hold the meat that way. Amr of Huna 
says Rufunu Mutalasu Simen Mubasar. Says Rufunu, you 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 are allowed to make a unique sign in the meat. Ki Adar Rabba by Rufunu Michate Chulat Los Karnesa, like Rabba by Rufunu would cut meat into a triangle. So if uh, Rabba by Rufunu, if he bought meat and he wanted to send it back to his house, um, and he wanted his family, his household to know that this was in fact meat that he procured and that it is um you know wasn't swapped by any kind of non-kosher meat or anything like that so his sign would be that he would always cut his meat into a triangle and it, it, when his family sees that they received meat that was cut into a triangle they knew oh okay that was coming from rabba bar ba, rabba and that um, it was kosher meat so Rebchia and Reb Shimon, the son of Rebbe, okay? Shoklin mono keneged mono biyomtif. So when they would divide up meat, they would weigh one piece of meat with another piece of meat. So basically, they, they would take like one piece of meat and they would know how much it weighs. I don't know, five pounds. Is five pounds a lot or a little bit for meat? I don't really know. Um, so, I don't know, let's just say it was five pounds. So, they would have a piece of meat and it was five pounds. And then they would be dividing up other meat and so that they would know how much the meat that they're dividing up is. So they would put the meat on the scale. And on the other side of the scale was not a weight because that, that, that would, you know, not, not be allowed. But it was, it was that initial piece of meat that was five pounds. And they would put the other meat on the other side of the scale and, you know, relative to the first piece of meat, which they already know is five pounds, they would weigh the other meat. So that's the point is that when they were dividing up the meat, they wouldn't weigh it with a weight, but they would weigh it using a different piece of meat that they are, knew in advance how much it weighs. Kiman. So who's that like? Loker Yehuda v'loker Rabbanon. It's not like Rabbi Yehuda, nor is it like the Rabbanon. Nikra Rabbi Yehuda, Omar, Shokel Adam, Basar, Kenegad HaKlio, Kenegad HaKupetz. It's not like Rabbi Yehuda, because Rabbi Yehuda says that you're allowed to um, weigh meat um, using a vessel or a cleaver, right, as as a counterweight. Can I get a cle in? Can I get me the low? So that's specifically a vessel. You're allowed to weigh the meat with a vessel being the counterweight, but not with other meat being the counterweight. So so Rabbi Yehuda would not agree with what Rabbi Chia and Rabbi Shimon Berebi were doing. Because he, Yehuda would say you're allowed to use as a counterweight a vessel, but not another piece of meat. Ikirabonon, and if it's the rabbis, well then certainly not. Ha amre ein mashgichin bechaf moznaim kol iker. They, the rabbis, said you have to stay away from the scales completely, and therefore the rabbis would certainly say that you would not be allowed to weigh one piece of meat um, with another piece of meat as a counterweight. So, and for the Gemara in the Avud Rabbi Yoshua, they were acting in accordance with Rabbi Yoshua's opinion. The Tanya, as we learn in the Bryce, Rabbi Yoshua Omer, says Rabbi Yoshua, Shoklin Mono Kineged Mono Biyomtiv, that you are in fact allowed to weigh one piece of meat using another piece of meat as a counterweight. I'm Rabbi Yosef, Allah, Rabbi Yoshua, Hau Vatanam Bibchoris Kavase. And says Rabbi Yosef that the halacha is talking like Rabbi Yoshua that you are permitted to weigh one piece of meat using another piece of meat as a counterweight on Yom Tif. Since we have a Stam Mishnah in Bechoris that seems to be agreeing with Rabbi Yoshua. The Tananis we learn in a Mishnah in Bechoris Psule Amukdashin Hano Oson Lehekdish Vishoklin Mono Knegin Mono Bibchor. What in the world? So, what's Psulei HaMukdashim? Psulei HaMukdashim is like a korban that gets a mum, right? So, let's say I'm Makdish a korban. Let's say I take a, an animal, I set it aside, and I say I'm going to uh, offer this uh, animal as a um, korban. Okay, and then it gets a mum. So, you can no longer offer, to, offer it as a korban. So, what do you do? So, you sell it to somebody else, and you get the money, and then that money takes, uh, it takes on the value of um, hektish. Okay, very good. Now, this fellow who bought this animal that was hectish, and now this other fellow bought it, 
and it's no longer hectic. You can, you can slaughter it now and eat it. <laughs> but there are certain limitations. While you can slaughter and eat it, but there are certain limitations. You wouldn't be able to like, you know, shear its wool or anything like that and, and use it and work it. And also we don't, so generally, um, we wouldn't want to just sell it in the market, you know, like, and weigh it and, and do all sorts of regular kind of business things with this animal because it was once upon a time hectic. So while you're allowed to slaughter it and eat it, right? So you had this animal that was hectic. It got a mum. So then you um, uh, sold it. And now the, va- the money that you received for it takes on the, va- uh, the uh, hectic. But um, this animal that was now purchased, so you can, right, that was once upon a time hectic and now was purchased by this other fellow, he could slaughter it and eat it. But what about, can he then, after he slaughters it, can he then go to the market and sell it? So the simple answer is no. However, however, when it comes to hectic, when it comes to um, this particular case, so the original fellow who had set aside this animal to be a Corbin, so when he sells, you know, when, when the animal gets a mum and he sells the animal, so the original fellow takes that money and buys another Corbin with it. And therefore, it's in our interest to be able to drive up the price that the original fellow is going to get for, the, for this Corbin that has a mum that he sells, because ultimately, who's the beneficiary? Hectish. Again, if you have Ruven, Ruven sets aside, an, sets aside an animal to be a Corbin. The animal gets a mum. So he has to sell it. That money that Reuven receives for having sold this animal that got a mum, he's then going to reinvest into buying a new Corbin. And therefore, it would be gewaldig if Reuven can get the highest price possible. How is he going to get the highest price possible? Well, the best way to get the highest price is that, well, he tells Shimon who he sells the animal to, he says, look, you can always just go to the market and after you slaughter this animal, you could sell it and weigh it and sell it for, for a high price. And because Shimon will be able to sell it for a high price, Ruvain will also be able to get a good price for it and ultimately reinvest it in a Shtarka, in a Gishmake Korban. And therefore, we allow, when it comes to Hekdish, right, this animal that got a mum, that then he, Ruvain then sells to Shimon, we allow Shimon to weigh it properly in a regular manner in order to sell it to other people because that way Shimon will be able to get more money for the, um, animal and because Shimon will be able to get more money Ruvain will also be able to tra- charge a higher price and ultimately he's then going to reinvest that in a new Corbin and he'll have more money to invest in a new Corbin so that's what the that's what the mission is saying so that Mukdashin, when you have hectish that becomes puzzle right Ruvain had a Corbin that he had set aside an animal that he had set aside to be a Corbin it then got a mum so it was puzzle so he then sold it to Shimon so on an hectish ultimately the money that Ruvain gets for the uh, this the, for for selling the animal that has a mum. Ultimately, Ruven, right? This money is 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 has kedusha, and he's ultimately going to be reinvesting it in a new korban. And therefore, the beneficiary of a potentially higher price is hektish because right is 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 the is is, is the base because he's going to be buying a korban for a new korban for the base amikdash. So now, therefore, for that reason, Shimon who buys the animal is allowed to slaughter it and sell it normally and weigh it normally in the market. However, when it comes to a Bechor, however, as opposed to a regular Korban, when it comes to a Bechor, who's the beneficiary? The Korban, right? A Bechor, a firstborn animal, goes to the, what did I say? Korban? The Kohen, right? A, 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 a Bechor, a firstborn animal, when it's born, goes to the Kohen, to the priest. Now, the Kohen um, can slaughter it and eat it, but if he slaughters it and sells it in the market, who's getting that um, um, profit? The Kohen, not the Bessemita. He gets it himself. It's his. So because the profit, because the beneficiary in this case is the Kohen, so we actually have more, we have stricter rules. We don't, because it was once upon a time a Korban, it was once upon a time Hectish, when it was born as a Bechor, it was supposed to be offered as a korban. Nowadays, we don't have any korbanis 
We don't have a base of mikdash. We don't offer korbanos, so we just wait for it to get a mum. But even once it gets a mum, he could slaughter it and eat it, but he cannot slaughter it and then go to the market and sell it and weigh it normally with regular counterweights. He cannot do that because that wouldn't be very respectful for this animal that was once a uh, once hectish, that was once a bechor. And therefore, um, so what happens in the case of bechor where the beneficiary is the kohen? V'shok l'mona k'neged mona b'bechor. That you can, um, that you can, what, what you can do by, by Bechor is you cannot weigh the meat of the slaughtered Balmum Bechor. You cannot weigh the meat with a regular counterweight because, um, it wouldn't be respectful to this animal that was once, uh, a hectish. However, what you can do is you could weigh, you know, if he wants to sell the meat, he can weigh it using other meat as a counterweight. So, and again, that's because the beneficiary here is not the base of Mikdash, it's the Kohen. And therefore, what do we see? So we see that weighing meat, using other meat as a counterweight, is sort of not a normal way of weighing meat, and therefore it's permitted to be done with a Bechor. And therefore, if we apply that to Yom Tif, what do we see? We should be able to say that weighing meat using other meat as a counterweight is not a normal way of weighing meat, and therefore it, um, it makes sense to say, um, and that's why I guess uh, you would say that um, Reb Chia and Reb Shem Berebi were weighing the meat that way, and also that would be in line with Reb uh, Yoshua, who says that on Yom Tif you're allowed to weigh meat um, using other meat as a counter. Wait, Amalei Abai, Abai says to Yosef, V'dil Malohi. Maybe Reb Yoshua is not in cahoots with um, the Stam Mishnah in Bechoris. Ad kan lo ka'am Reb Yoshua hacha, because you can argue that the only reason why Reb Yoshua says over here by uh, Yom Tif, that you are allowed to weigh meat with other meat as a counterweight. Ela dileka bizin kodshim. Because on Yom Tif, it's not, we're not talking about Kodshim, we're not talking about Hektish. And therefore, if it's Yom Tif and Reb Chia and Reb Shem Berebi want to divide up the meat and they want to know how much the weight of the meat is, so they can use other meat as a counterweight. However, Reb Yoshua would say, Aval Hosum Bapai Bechor, Dika Bizin Kodshim, where this, this animal was initially a Bechor, and by weighing the animal, we're treating it just like, you know, by weighing the meat of this Bechor that you slaughtered that has a mum, by weighing it, even with using meat as a counterweight, as a counterweight and not a regular counterweight, still, you're just treating this animal like regular meat that you're selling in the market and weighing. So lo, Rabbi Yeshua would say that you would not be allowed in that case to use other meat as a counterweight because it is, um, you know, it's, it's not respectful to this animal that was once a Bechor. Inami, or else, Arkan Luka Amir Abbanon Hosom, maybe the rabbis say when it comes to Bechor that you'd be allowed to weigh the meat in this manner, um, by, you know, um, 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 using other meat as a counterweight. Because that's not a normal way that you weigh meat in the market. In the marketplace, how do you weigh meat with a counterweight? Over here, you're using other meat as a counterweight, and therefore that's not a normal way to weigh meat, and therefore that's why it's allowed. That's why the rabbis say it's allowed in the context of bechor. Aval hacha, but over here on Yom Tif, but on Yom Tif, it's a normal way for people to divide up meat using other meat as a counterweight, not for doing business in the market, but you know, it's it would be completely normal for Reb Chia and Reb Shimon Berebi to. Divide up meat using other meat as a counterweight, and therefore, because that's completely normal, even the rabbis who say that by a bechor, you would be allowed to um, um, weigh meat using other meat as a countermeasure. Um, they would say that on Yom Tif, when Reb Chia and Reb Shimon Berebi were arguing, uh, were, 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 were dividing up meat, they would say you would not be allowed to divide uh, to weigh meat with using other meat as a countermeasure, since that's a normal way to divide up meat among friends. Now, Frek the Gemara, the Memra, the, so we, so we weren't able to draw a parallel, right? Rav Yosef wanted to say that the Allah is like Rav Yoshua, that on Yom Tif we can weigh meat using other meat as a counterweight. Since we have a Stam Mishnah like him in Bechoris, we ended up saying that that isn't necessarily a good proof. 
Now, one second, is this to imply that um, Reb Chia and Reb Shimon Burebi were like, you know, stingy, so to speak, with each other, that they had to weigh out the meat that they were dividing with each other perfectly and they had to use weights and counterweights and, and meats and things like that. But I thought that there was once a story where there were seven fish that somebody dropped off by Rebbe's house. And five of the seven fish were found in Rebchia's house and Reb Shimon Rebbe didn't really care. He wasn't like, they weren't like uh, so on top of each other and so machped like, oh, if he got one, then I have to get one. If he got two, then I have to get two. No, they were like kind of more easygoing. So if that's the case, why are we so concerned? Like, why were they dividing up meat on Yom Tif and using other meat as counterweights? I thought they're like kind of like more like live and let live with each other. Amr um, Papa says, Rab Papa, Shdigave Benayu Irebchia, Rab Yishma, Rab Yossi, Rab Shimon, Rabbi, Uvar Kapara. So switch things around. It wasn't, it wasn't Rab Chia and Rab Shimon, Rabbi. If we're saying that it was talking about Rab Chia, so he was dividing up meat then with Rabbi Shema Rabbi Yossi. And if we're saying that it was Rabbi Shimon Rabbi, well then he was dividing up meat with Bar Kapara. But it's true that between Rabbi Chia and Rabbi Shimon Rabbi, they would not be um, uh, makpid on one another. Alright, sounds like fun. Alrighty, and now we get to a new Mishnah that says, In Mashchizin as a Sakin Biyomtiv, Hava Masiyah al Gami Chaverta. You're not allowed to sharpen a knife on Yomtiv. And the Gemara is going to explain, go into some more detail over there. You're not allowed to sharpen a knife on Yom Tif, but you can sort of um, uh, rub it against another one. You know, I don't know, you know, kind of take two knives and do that fancy thing like they do on the on the celebrity chefs. You know, they take like two knives and they uh, scrape them against each other, although one of them is probably like a sharpening thing. But um, you're not allowed to sharpen knives, but you can sort of like, uh, you know, hit them again, rub them against each other and sharpen them that way, I guess. Let's see. It says the Gemara. Am Rav Huna says Rav Huna lo shanu el b'mashchezes shel even. Av b'mashchezes shel eitz moter. So it says Rav Huna that when the Mishnah says that you're not allowed to sharpen a knife on Yom Tov, it means you're not allowed to sharpen a knife on a stone sharpener, but you could sharpen a knife on a wood sharpener. Am Rav Yehuda, Am Rav Shmuel, and says Rav Yehuda, Am Rav Shmuel. Hado Amar shall even also that when we say that the sharpener of stone is not allowed, lo Amar and Ella lechadda. Yeah, you're not allowed to sharpen a knife on a stone sharpener to sharpen it. Ava lahavish am nunisa muter, but you can remove whatever like fat may have been on the knife by rubbing it against a stone. That would be acceptable. Michladu b'shalei tzafilu lechadda nami muter, implying that if we're talking about a sharpener of wood, you can even um you know, sharpen uh, on a sharpener of wood. So with the stone one, you can remove the fat from, you can remove fat from knives, but not sharpen. With a wooden sharpener, you can even sharpen. There are those who apply Reb Yehuda, Reb Shimon, Reb uh, Yudam, uh, caveat to the second part of Reb Huna's statement, which is, Bishel Eitz Mutter, that you're allowed to um, sharpen a knife on um, wood. Omar Rav Yehuda Omar Shmuel Hada Omar Bishal Eitz Motor says Rav Yehuda in the name of Shmuel that when we say that a wooden sharpener is permitted La Amar and El Lahavish Am Nunisa that is only to remove the fats of all Nechad the Osir but to sharpen the knife you would not be allowed to use a wood one Mechlal de Bishel Evan Afilu Lahavisham Nuni. So also implying that if we're talking about a stone sharpener, you can't even use it just to remove the um, fats. You can remove the fats from using a wood uh, sharpener, but a stone one, forget it. Nothing. Ike Damasni La Masnisin are those who teach what Rav Yehuda Amr Shmuel says on the Mishnah that a Mashkizin is a Sakim Biyomtiv that we say that you're not allowed to sharpen a knife on Yomtiv. Amr Rav Yehuda Amr Shmuel Lo Shano El Chadda. Now that is only to sharpen it, but to remove its, but to remove fat from the um, um, knife is okay. Which implies that in the next part of the Mishnah, the Agabi Chaberta Nami Mutter, that to sharpen a one knife on another knife, uh, you know that that would be Mutter. That when the Rasha says that it is Osir, that is um, that that specifically to sharpen. 
but to remove fat would be permitted. And the safer when it says that you're allowed to um, um, uh, sharpen from one knife to another, it means even mamish to sharpen. If you get the masni la seifa, and there are those who say that Rav Yudah Mishmul is going on the second part of the Mishnah, which is of Amasiya Gabi Chaberta, that you're allowed to sharpen one a knife using another knife. Amr of Yudah Amar Shmuel, Lo Shonu Lelahav Yisham Nisa, that Rav Yudah says the name of Shmuel, that that's specifically to remove the fats. Ava Lechad Zedah Osir, but using another knife, you would not be allowed to sharpen it. Mechlad Zedah Mashchezes, Afil Lelahav Yisham Nisa Osir, implying that when it comes to, um, um, like regular sharpening of a knife, um, even just to remove the fats would not be allowed. Mantana de Mashreze, de Mashreze's author. Who is the teacher that teaches that you would not be allowed to sharpen a knife on a uh, Yomtiv? Amrav Chizda de Lok Rabbi Yehuda. Well, clearly that is unlike Rabbi Yehuda. De Tanya, as we learned in the Bible, in Ben Yomtiv, the Shabbos, the Lochel Nevesh Bilvat. That what's the big nafkamina between Yomtiv and Shabbos? Food preparation. Then on Shabbos, you're not allowed to prepare food. Right, you're not allowed to cook on Shabbos. But on Yom Tif, you are allowed to prepare food. And Rebuda says, not only are you allowed to prepare food, you can even prepare things that you need in order to prepare food. For example, if you don't have a knife and you need to put, the, you need to, you know, fix the knife or sharpen the knife, whatever it is, you can do that on Yom Tif. There's no problem. Just like you can prepare the food, you can also prepare the things that you need in order to prepare the food. That is um, Rebuda's opinion. Shall we um, say in your name that the halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda? Says Rav to Rav Chizda, to his father Rav Chizda, can we quote you as saying that the halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda, that even machshire yochel nefesh, even sort of the meta food preparation things, like, 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 like making a knife, can we say that even that is doche yomtif? Omar le, Rav Chizda says to Rav Yei Raiva, may be the will, the cholhani mili ma'al yusa, tidushun mishmoi, may be the will that all, all amazing teachings, such as the one that you just suggested, that Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda, that machshir och nefesh is, is permitted on yomtif, says Rav Chizda, it would be gewaldig if all such amazing statements you would quote in my name. Amr of Nechemia, Braid of Yosef, Havakim Nekami de Rava. Rav Nechemia, Braid of Yosef says that one time he was in front of Rava Vahava, Kamaiver the Sakina Apuma de Dikula, and he was like scraping a knife against the uh, rim of a basket. The Amrile, the Amrile the Ka'avid Mar, and Rav Nechemia, Braid of Yosef says to Rava, he says, eh, No, what's Pshat? How come you're scraping the knife against the, the lip of the, the rim of the basket? Are you, are you sharpening the knife on Yom Tif? Or are you merely removing the fats from it? The Omarli and Rav said to me, says Rav Nechem Yebrei, Rav Yosef, Oh, I am just removing the fats. I'm not actually, right? I mean, I'm just removing the fats. But says Rav Nechem Yebrei, Rav Yosef, I was able to figure out I was able to read between the lines and to understand that really he was actually sharpening the knife on the basket. But he, but Rava felt What does that mean? It means that sometimes something is the actual halacha, i.e. the halacha is that you technically are allowed to sharpen a knife on Yom Tif because the halacha is like Rav Chizda, like Rav and Rav Chizda were saying that you are allowed to um, sharpen a knife on Yom Tif like Rabbi Yehuda. However, Ve'en Morin Kane, we don't officially rule that way for other people because we don't want them to take things lightly as we're going to see later on that even Rabbi Yehuda says that if you were able to do it before Yom Tif, then you really need to do it before Yom Tif. And, you know, in, in order to avoid people making mistakes, we don't actually publicly suggest that you're allowed to sharpen knives on Yom Tif. However, the halacha, technically speaking, is that you are allowed to sharpen knives on Yom Tif. And therefore, when Rav Nechemia, brother of Yosef, asked um, Rava, hey, are you sharpening a knife on Yom Tif? He said, no, I'm only removing the um, fats. Now, um, but Rav Nechemia, brother of Yosef, was able to read between the lines and understand that, no, Rava was in fact sharpening the knife. He just didn't want to publicly suggest that you're allowed to sharpen knives on Yom Tif.
From Rabbi, it says, Rabbi, Havokim Nakami Demar, that one time he was before Mar, generally speaking, Mar is um, Rabba, but um, there's apparently another Girsa where it may be with Yosef, but it says, Abai, let's say he was with Rabba, Havokam Me'avr Sakina, Asfosa Durechaya, and he was uh, you know, scraping a knife on the lip of a, of a, of a, of a, of a, of a, of a uh, what's it called? A flour mill. The Amrile, and I said to Rabba, Lechadda Kaboy Mar, O Lahabisham Nunisa, and I said, Rabba, are you, um, sharpening the knife or are you merely removing fats? And he says, Oh, I'm merely removing fats. And says, Abaye, I was able to tell, I was able to read between the lines and understand that Rabba was really um, sharpening the knife because of Allah Morin Cain, but he felt that while the Allah is technically speaking, you're allowed to sharpen a knife on Yom Tif, however, we do not um, paskin publicly. We do not publicly teach that that is the halacha, and therefore um, Rabbah claimed to, have, to Abaye that he was merely removing fats from the knife. Can you show a knife to a chacham, uh, to a mumche, uh, essentially, on Yom Tif? That if you have a shaykhit, a fellow who slaughters animals, so apparently there was a halacha, that you always had to show the knife but to a an expert before slaughtering an animal. So are you is is a slaughterer, is a shaykhit allowed to show his knife to a chacham, to a mumche on Yom Tif? Rav Mari Bredu of Bizna Shari. Rav Mari Bredu of Bizna says, yes, you're allowed to show the knife to a chacham on Yom Tif. Rabban and Asr, whereas the rabbis say, no, don't do it. Rav Yosef Omar and says, Rav Yosef Tamar Chacham or the Atzmo Mashil Lachirim. Tamar Chacham could check out his own knives on Yom Tif and then lend it out to um, slaughterers to um, use. From Rav Yosef and says, Rav Yosef Sakin Shom Domut Lachad the Yom Tif that if you have a uh, knife that dulled, that got dull, you'd be allowed to sharpen it on Yom Tif on Emile de Pascha Agav Duchko. That's if you would still technically be able to use the knife if you would apply pressure, right? So if uh, that you got a knife that dulled out on Yom Tif and you could still technically use it so you could um, fix it up on Yom Tif and that would be um, okay. Darsh of Chizda Vitemer of Yosef says of Chizda Samtaka says of Yosef Echad Sokin Shinivgima Vechad Shopud Shinirtsam If you have a knife that um, gets like uh, you know uh, get, uh, that gets uh, damaged. Vechad shapud shenirtsam. If you have a skewer that the tip uh, fell off, got knocked off. Vechad grefas toner vechirayim, as well as scraping out a um, uh, uh, um, uh, an oven or a stove that like I don't know some of the inside of the oven kind of fell down into it. Vechad shapud shenirtsam. Where where am I? Biyomtiv on yomtiv. Oh, so now we get to the machlokas between Rabbi Yehuda and the Rabban and the Tanya, as we learned at Abraisa, right? So basically the question is, can you fix this knife? Can you fix this skewer or the oven? So we learn in Abraisa, Ein ben yomtiv the Shabbos el ochel nefesh bovad, Rabbi Yehuda matar af machshiri ochel nefesh. So the Abraisa says that the only difference between yomtiv and Shabbos is with regard to food preparation. That, um, uh, the rabbi says it's only with regard to food preparation, whereas Rabbi Yehuda says in addition to strict food preparation, it also the um, uh, also on Yom Tif you could um, prepare meta food preparation things such as you can fix up a knife on Yom Tif. My time with the Tanakama. How come the Tanakama lim- limits it to food preparation, not preparing knives on my crop? Because the pasuk says who levado yehoselachem who filomachshirav that it says who. It alone, food preparation alone, can be done on Yom Tov. Who? It. Food preparation, v'lo machshirav, but not the meta aspects. Rabbi Yehuda Amar, lochem, lochem v'luchot sarkechem. The Rabbi Yehuda will say that the Pazik says lochem to you for all of your needs. And even if that means creating, you know, making a knife so you could, so that you could um, prepare your food. V'tanakamo hoksiv lochem. What about, what is the Tanakama who limits, um, um, the permissibility to food preparation directly, but forbids, uh, you know, meta food preparation things? 
Talks of Lachem, but doesn't it say for you, for all of your needs? What the rabbis learned from there is, yeah, you can create, you can make food for yourselves, but not for Gentiles. Um, however, it is nonetheless limited to food preparation, not, it does not include meta things. What is Rabbi Yehuda who says that even meta food preparation is permitted on um, Yom Tif? What does he do with the fact that it says who, it, which is a limiting kind of thing? So Rabbi Yehuda will say, Rabbi Yehuda will say look, the Pasuk says who, which is limited, but it also says lochem, which is saying for all of your needs. Friends, Rabbi Yehuda says, what do you do with the fact that it says who, which is limited, limiting, and lochem, which is inclusive? What it's saying is that while well, there are certain things that are allowed, certain meta activities are allowed in Yom Tev and certain are not. If you could have done it before Yom Tev, so then you have to do it before Yom Tif. If you couldn't have done it before Yom Tif, maybe you're busy or maybe it wasn't broken yet, whatever it is, so then you could prepare uh, the knife or you know do, do these meta preparations even on Yom Tif. If you have a skewer that gets bent, also the sack, no, but Yom Tif, you're not allowed to fix it on Yom Tif because it's still usable as is. So if it's bent a shtickle, don't, don't, don't straighten it out in Yom Tif. Just use it bent. Pshita, this is obvious, because after all, it's not broken, so don't fix it. Well, the Chiddush is that even though you could unbend it with your hands, you don't even need to use like hammers and things like that. You could just unbend it with your hands. Still, do not unbend it on Yom Tif. For Amr of Yudah, Amr Shmuel, says of Yudah in the name of Shmuel, Shapud Shet Tzalubo Basr, and the skewer that they used, in order to roast meat, also the tatlo b'yomtiv, you're not allowed to move it on yomtiv. Meaning, you had the skewer, you already used it for what you needed to use it for. You already used it to, to, to skewer meat. So now it becomes muksuk, so you have no need for it anymore. Rav Adabar Ahava, Amr of Malkio, says Rav Adabar Ahava, in the name of Rav Malkio, Shomto Manicho Bekeren Zavas. You kind of, after you're done using it, you can kind of like, you know, kick it or, you know, use some other non normal way to get it into a corner. Amr of Chia Bar Ashi, Amr of Huna. This is of Chia Bar Ashi in the name of Rav Huna. Fushiesh all of Gazai's basur. That in order to move the skewer over to the corner after you're done using it, you would have to have a Gazai of meat on it. Ravina Amar, where it says Ravina, Afapisha ain all of basur mutter. Even if it doesn't have any meat on the skewer, it's still mutter to move it over into the. You'd still be allowed to move it over into the corner, just like if you have like a dangerous. Um, thorn in Rosh Hashanah you'd be allowed to move it over to the side so also this um, skewer you'd be allowed to move out of the way that a skewer and also um, uh, maid servants uh, it's talking about Sugi and Ksubis where a woman's getting married and bringing all sorts of maid servants into the marriage. Vigumis, uh, this has to do with uh, puberty. If you have two pubic hairs, shte Cyrus, but um, there's no hairs dart and just um, like um, uh, like hair follicles, I guess, like where like the hair, I don't know what a follicle is, but like where the hair would be, there's like a, a guma, like a hole, like where hair would go, but there's no hair, alas. Um, Rav Malkio. So in those cases, we pass in like Rav Malkio. Baloris, when it comes to, I think it's like a rat tail, like um, a, f- a fellow who's got like a ponytail kind of thing um, for a Vodazara. Um, and you got to like kind of, if you are if you have a Jewish barber, you can't really leave like a Vodazara rat tails. Um, Afer, Mikla, also when it comes to putting like um, ash into wounds, um, okay, Vigvina, and also like not eating um, Gentile, Gentilic cheese. Rav Malkia, so there we pass in like Rav Malkia. Rav Papa Amr says Rav Papa Masnisa no Masnisa Rav Malkia. Then when it comes to Mishnais and Brises, it's like Rav Malkia Shmaitz Rav Malkia, but like things that we have just like from tradition, not from actual Brises and stuff. So that's not Rav Malkia, that's Rav Malkia. Vesimonich Masnis and Malchusa. And if you want to remember Rav Malkia or Malkia, well, it's Masnisa Malkisa. That Masnis and Malkisa, that the Mishnais and the Brises are are like the queen. All right which is like Malkia. 
my benayu ikim benayu shvachis. What's the difference between Rav Papa and Rav Chinna Beder of Ika? The nafkamina is when it comes to um, shvachis, when it comes to the maid servants, because um, according to um, Rav Chinna Beder of Ika, so the maid servants uh, we said is like Rav Malkio, but the fact of the matter is it's a brisa, so therefore according to Rav Papa it would be Rav Malkia. All right, that sounds like fun. Now, one interesting tidbit, tidbit about Rav Chanina, Rav Chinina of Ika, we saw a um, Gemara in Mesechta Brachis in the last parak of Mesechta Brachis that um, Rav Chinina Breder of Ika was killed by Rav Papa and Rav, Rav Huna Breder of Yeshua when he made a brach of Chacham Arazim when he saw them. Um, so that was very interesting. It's also interesting that over here, Kilu, he mentions his Malkiyo, Malkiyo thing, and then Rav Papa is the one who argues on him. Um, which is interesting because the last time that we saw that I recall that we saw them together, um, he kind of got killed, the shtickle. Uh, friends, that was the Chofches of Mesechta uh, Beitza. So, the first part of the daf kind of talked about uh, weighing uh, meat on, on Yom Tif. How can you weigh meat on Yom Tif? So, we saw three different uh, ways. So, Rabbi Yehuda's opinion is that you can weigh meat um, with a counterweight of a vessel or a um, uh, a cleaver, the rabbi said, stay away completely from scales. And Rabbi Yoshua has kind of a middle opinion, which is that you can weigh meat um, with like other meat as a counterweight on um, Yom Tif. We saw along the way a Mishnah from Bechoris, where we saw an interesting distinction between when you have a Kodshim that got a mum. And you sell it to somebody else, that you can weigh in kind of a normal way, because by weighing it in a normal way, that means that the fellow who's selling the animal um, can uh, get a higher price for it, and ultimately he's going to be reinvesting that uh, money in a new animal, so hectish ultimately wins out, so therefore you can sell it in a normal way, whereas um, by Bechor, where the ultimate beneficiary is the Kohen, who's selling this Bechor that got a mum, so in that case, you can only weigh the meat, using other meat um, as a counterweight. We discussed um, sharpening knives on Yom Tif. So we say you could sharpen knives against other knives, but not necessarily in a normal way. We saw different nafkaminas potentially if you're sharpening a knife on a stone or if you're sharpening a knife on wood or um, you know against another knife. And we saw that the halacha is that you are allowed to um, sharpen knives on Yom Tif, but it is a halacha vein morin king. That um, while it's the halacha that yes, you're allowed to sharpen knives on Yom Tif, we don't publicly sort of paskin um, that way. Then we got to that awesome achlokas between the Chacham and Rabbi Yehuda about on Yom Tif, are you only allowed to prepare food or can you also do meta kind of food preparation? Uh, the Chacham say that only food. Whereas Rabbi Yehuda says you can even like do things like prepare knives um, that you'll use for food or skewers, things like that. Um, and we did, there was a caveat, however, that um, you, you know, if you could have done it before Yom Tev, you have to do it before Yom Tev. If you couldn't have done it before Yom Tev, you could, um, um, you know, uh, do these meta kind of things on Yom Tev. Friends, that was Daf Chavches um, of Masech Beya. I hope you enjoyed. Peace out.